to you here from, well, paradise. It's great stuff. So, we're here visiting another amazing, breathtaking, really mind-boggling, this particular artist. Because she does some, I never even imagined that you could do these things. I just never thought about it. I mean, I just obviously never thought very much about many things. But you see, you learn something new every day. So today it's Liz. And the reason why I, I'm excited about Liz is because Liz really changed my life. Because I didn't know that there were actually any Americans that were living on the island. And then I thought if I met them, that they surely would be like, you know, the type of Americans that you, you meet places. Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Super special. And they had a tribe of their own. And I met the most amazing people because of these people. Not just the most amazing people. Ah, the outstanding love and partner in my life, Nikki, I also met through Liz. So, very special place, very special people. The creme de la creme of the beef is artistic talent. Check, check, check it out. something. Can you see wow. the resemblance? <laughs> this, was a bit. <laughs> this was my first embroidery, a self-portrait. It's good you're catching it on camera before uh, <laughs> before it's too late. <laughs> uh, this one, the video footage will sell for millions. This is the way it works nowadays. <laughs> yeah, my, my grandma really taught me to sew. She um, was this amazing woman, Dorothy, and she um, she worked in a fabric store, so she always had lots of access to fabrics, and she was super skilled at making clothes and things, and um, she would, uh, with her friends, get together and do these um, quilting, um, I quilting you, circles. Yes. Yeah, and so, so what they would do, they, they would have kind of a big stretcher for this quilt, and they needed many women to work on it at once, so. Um, and of course, like the main thing is that they would all chat and have tea and, you know, catch up on their lives and everything. So that was always really inspiring to me, you know. Um, and then I sort of started to do something similar. I mean, it evolved over time, but um, I moved to Barcelona 12 years ago and I was a foreigner in a foreign land, you know, and I just wanted to see what was, um, what did everyone think about their city? What did everything mean? And what were their memories and all these things? So I started to embroider maps. I was embroidering um, uh, maps of the neighborhoods and making them into cushions. And then I had them on a wall of a gallery and people would put pins in the, the spots. I asked them different questions about yeah, where they lived and to kind of stretch them onto these um, embro onto this uh, foldable embroidery table. So it was, it's kind of like a quilting stretcher basically, but it's like a table without a top. So I would kind of sit there in the public space with this outstretched in front of me and um, kind of recreating my grandmother's quilting circles in a way, but with just totally random people from the street. So I just set up chairs, strangers. total strangers, set up chairs around and asked people different questions about, um, about whatever city we were in, whatever map we were looking at. No? So, um, you know, what were their memories? What are positive places in the city for them? What are places that are not so positive that they'd like to change? places they'd like to preserve, just important personal moments, uh, where they live, all sorts of things. Sorry, people had to uh, respond to this by embroidering little symbols into the map too, so most people aren't really used to that. So you had to educate them a little bit on this. A little bit, maybe I'd like thread the needle for them and 
give them a little motivation, but I was just giving them very simple symbols. And then um, the good thing was that they had to sit there for a while. You know, if I had just taken a pen and they'd been like, yeah, that's the spot, they would have just walked right away. But I really wanted them to sit there for a while and start talking to the other strangers at the table, you know? And kind of get into debates even about, you know, what's going on, what's really going on in the city and what, uh, what do they want to happen in the city? Kind of take responsibility for what's happening in the place they live. Kind of think about how they, yeah, have power to do things about it. Um, so, for example, to, to debate different kind of urbanistic plans, you know, different buildings that are going up or neighborhoods that are being transformed and things like that. And then, of course, just cute little things would happen, like people would be marking the same building. And you're like, what's going on there? They're like, they're like, I live there. And they're like, no, I live there, you know? And it, it would be, <laughs> they would meet their neighbors for the first time, but in the middle of the middle of square, yeah. you know? Um, so, yeah, so I, I took this project, started in Barcelona, because that's where I was living. And I never planned to do it anywhere else, but I just loved the experience so much having this, um, this like excuse really to talk to strangers about like their most in innermost <laughs> thoughts and yeah. desires and everything. But they would never tell anybody, no? <laughs> right, but then, but then when they're presented with this opportunity, people love talking about their story, they love it. And so I just love this uh, dynamic. And so I took it to New York, and to Bangalore in India, Quito, Ecuador, Fez, Morocco. And then finally to Ibiza. Um, and here in Ibiza I did it a little differently because in the other cities I was two weeks in each place. So just every day, boom, boom, boom in the street. That's all I had, that's all the time I had. Uh, but here in Ibiza, I live here now, so um, for about two years, I would just take it out whenever there was a nice day to different places on the island. And in the end, about a thousand people participated. So here you have the... Uh... Here you have the map of the island. You're looking at it upside down there, but... Uh... <laughs> you can see I, I embroidered the island and then people added all of their different little symbols to mark magic places and their home, positive places, places they like to go to be in nature, places they like to go to be with people, places that they think are environmentally degraded that need little attention, um, personal places, historical places. Yeah. Happiness is true. Here in Ibiza, there were very, like, um, very Ibiza stories, I would say, like, when they know it's... Uh.